nation uh, is not the way Umberto Eco thinks it is. It is not the way most people would advocate sort of having an authority uh, make the decision as to what is a body of information with a certain amount of quality and, and, and authenticity. Uh, that's not the way it's going to happen in the future. The way it's going to happen in the future is that we're going to continue to have a very noisy environment out on the internet. And the way you pull signal out of the noise is by people of like-minded interests sharing with each other their opinions of <coughs> what is somebody is saying. So that if I like a story that somebody has written, and it doesn't matter if it's a famous author or journalist or even a 14-year-old child, if I include that some way in a way that says that, that, that yes, I like that story, um, you might find that we have enough similar likes that you could ask me, or you could ask my system, for a recommendation on other stories. And as this whole network grows, people will be, in fact, uh, filtering stories for each other in a way that is very different than having uh, uh, an authority, like somebody who reviews a restaurant. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I w visit a city, and I don't read a book that tells me what is the best restaurant. I actually ask a friend who either lives in the city or who travels a great deal, but I know the person well enough to trust their recommendation, and they know me. So it's a different way of getting the recommendation, and that will happen for the content of the internet as well. <coughs> Você acha que é, no ambiente da internet, que é essencialmente, originalmente, um ambiente anárquico, mm -hmm. existe uma fórmula, existe um jeito de as pessoas mm -hmm. se organizarem? Me lembro de uma palestra sua que você pediu para a plateia uh, começar a bater palmas aleatoriamente. Mm -hmm. yeah. E as pessoas começaram a bater, uh -huh. cada uma no seu ritmo. Em alguns segundos, estavam todos batendo palma no mesmo ritmo e na mesma velocidade. Você usou essa imagem para dizer a, uhum. a tendência do ser humano de se organizar de alguma uhum. forma. Uhum. E isso, é, fazendo um paralelo com a internet, é, transposto uhum. para a internet, significaria uhum. que as pessoas dentro da internet, desse ambiente uhum. anárquico, é, achariam um jeito de uhum. se organizar e de buscar informação. Uhum. É, uhum. Isso é um movimento espontâneo em que a gente deve esperar anos que aconteça, ou é possível, é, sem nenhum autoritarismo, que haja alguma intervenção, alguma condução desse processo externa à internet? Well, the reason for using the, the, the clapping example was to show that, that everybody in the audience could synchronize themselves in a few seconds without a conductor that there wasn't uh, a conductor in charge. And to try and organize certain things without remembering that is, is, it tends to be a mistake. That the internet isn't that it's unstructured, but it's that the structure is different for, for all sorts of people under different conditions. And the way you can basically structure it for yourself is by having so many different points of view and so many different ways to, uh, to enter it. I, it would be a mistake to think that, that what you have to do is either establish some kind of regulation at the government level or you've got to you know, establish some authorities that will, will read the information in advance and sort of qualify it as kind of good, bad, or indifferent. Um, it's just going to work very differently and it's going to be much more like the clapping of the hands and uh, Uh, again, the way the sort of nature operates. Um, Professor Negro Ponte, mm -hmm. uh, na área educacional a gente tem visto um verdadeiro mm -hmm. boom, um desenvolvimento muito grande de cursos uh, à distância utilizando a internet. Uh, a gente trabalha no desenvolvimento de ambientes virtuais de aprendizagem mm -hmm. usando as tecnologias interativas da rede para estar democratizando o ensino e uhum. abrindo novas portas. Eu queria saber como é que o senhor vê esse, uhum. esses cursos online, uhum. qual é a perspectiva de futuro. A gente sabe que ainda 
é uma tecnologia que está emergindo, os alunos têm várias queixas. Em uhum. geral, uhum. quem pesquisa ensino à distância usando tecnologias interativas costuma um, valorizar muito a parte tecnológica e esquecer um pouco a parte do ensino e da aprendizagem, esquecer um pouco até do aluno que está lá do outro lado recebendo uhum. Uhum. essa informação. Eu queria saber como é que o senhor vê o desenvolvimento desses ambientes virtuais de aprendizagem, se existe algum modelo ou algum modelo não, ou algum sistema que já esteja mais desenvolvido e que não tenha recebido tantas queixas e frustrações desses alunos virtuais. Um, there, there, there's sort of two, call them extremes, they may not be so uh, uh, different, but one is to focus on the word teaching and how do we mm -hmm. teach people, how do we multiply teachers, how do we develop curricula, how do we develop the material and, and get it to as many eyeballs and uh, as many uh, people as possible. And At the other extreme is, is, is learning, and that is how do we enable people to uh, play with information, to uh, learn about physics the same way you learn about football, and uh, to sort of have it be so, sort of a more natural uh, uh, phenomenon. And my whole tendency is, of course, toward the second, to look more at, at how computers and how the Internet itself allow children to, to, to basically be more in control, to, to build things and learn through building them, versus being told. Now, that doesn't mean I don't think people should be told or learn mm -hmm. that way. I'm sort of particularly mm -hmm. fascinated in how people can learn by doing, which is the way all of us learn for the first five or six years of our life, and then suddenly we were told that for the next 12 we would learn differently and that we would learn by being told. And I think that the really interesting change mm -hmm. is that computers will make that more of a continuum and that we will see much more learning by doing. So when I hear of, I don't know, you know, distance learning projects where people are complaining about the technology or they're not using it or it's breaking down and so on, I just consider that as sort of part of the uh, sort of the hazard of doing that in the sense that uh, yes these things will break down they will sometimes the signature of the technology will be stronger than the than the content itself but <coughs> much more optimistic about the use of that technology for children to access and, and, and in some sense for the til children to be teachers and to, to think of the student really as a teacher and to think of the computer as the student and that you sort of learn by teaching and uh, the two are not as separate as I'm describing but I'm clearly more optimistic about about the second este programa foi gravado e teve sua realização acompanhada em tempo real via internet por centenas de computadores conectados ao site Universo Online e também ao site, ao endereço da TV Cultura. E através, justamente, do endereço eletrônico, nós estamos recebendo perguntas para o Nicolas. Eu começaria aqui com duas questões. A primeira é de Beatriz Bretas, professora no Departamento de Comunicação Social da Universidade Federal de Minas Gerais, em Belo Horizonte. E ela pergunta o seguinte, diante da ausência de limites territoriais e do surgimento de novas formas de compartilhar o tempo, a partir do uso crescente da internet, como fica a ideia de vizinhança para o indivíduo? Seria possível, em outras palavras, falar de vizinhança no cyberespaço? Um, cyberspace has neighborhoods, for sure. They're just not physical neighborhoods. And one of the things that we have learned over the past few years is that the things that we know in space and time, that uh, because I'm close to somebody physically or I'm in the same time zone or are starting not to be the only forms of organization and that we can organize ourselves through affinity groups, through people that are uh, completely uh, in different places around the world. And that is starting to be stronger and stronger and people are spending a lot of time there and 
sometimes we worry. We say, oh, well, maybe